So what are radians and why do we care about them? To understand the need for radians, you need to start with an understanding of why we use degrees. If you are trying to work out a way to measure angles, perhaps you start out with a circle and consider cutting it into pieces to make your angles. It would make sense to cut the circle into a number that has many divisors, so that you can easily describe a quarter turn or a half turn and so on. A number you might settle on then is 360. We call this way of measuring angles degrees and it's very commonly used because it's convenient to talk about a 90 degree rotation or a 45 degree rotation and so on. The problem comes when we start talking about using these angles for some maths operations. A good example is the length of an arc. We can work this out pretty easily, as the arc is the same fraction of the circumference as the angle is of 360 degrees. Hence, we multiply the equation for the circumference, 2 pi r, by theta over 360. Now this is fine, but this type of term, theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi, appears throughout maths, a key example is calculus when talking about differentiating a sine or cosine function. These terms can become extremely frustrating and make calculations a lot more complicated. To fix this, we could try basing our system of angles off of the arc length itself, meaning that one of our new angle is equal to a walk around the circumference of the circle equal to the circle's radius. From this connection to the radius, we'll call these angles radians. If we consider our circumference equation again, we can see that a walk all the way around the circle is equal to 2 pi radians, and from that we can work out that pi radians is a walk halfway around the circle. Under this system, our equations get a lot simpler. For example, the equation for an arc length is simply the angle theta multiplied by the radius of our circle. This system is initially quite confusing, but the idea of considering an angle as a walk around the circle, instead of deriving it by arbitrarily splitting up the circle into pieces, is arguably the most useful way of viewing an angle, and it's for this reason that they're very commonly used throughout mathematics.